Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and together with ChessLecture.com, welcome to our lecture. So today I want to show you one of my early games way back when I was probably 17 and played more romantic chess you can say where I in this game managed to move almost all my pawns to really open up the files and go after the king. And this game starts with the Sicilian defense, e4, c5, knight c3. So I am playing the Grand Prix variation. So knight c6, f4, and after g6, knight f3, bishop g7, bishop b5. This bishop b5 move is both attacking idea and the positional idea. The positional idea is at the right moment to double black's pawns and then try to use the pawn weaknesses. And the attacking idea is simply to end up playing d3, castles, and f5, maybe queen e1, queen h4. So I actually covered the Grand Prix in my books that I co-authored with Grandmasters Ginger and Albert. So let's see what happens next. Knight d4. This is a natural way to meet this aggression. And here white has several ways to play. One of the main lines, is the, the one that we're commanding in the book, is castles. And I already showed you in one of my previous lectures what happens if black tries to take on b5. Knight takes and then play the move d5. And the idea here is that he takes d to throw in a6, obviously take it on d5, loses due to knight c7. And after a6, knight back, knight f6, black wants to gain the pawn back with benefits, right? Black is going to have a bishop pair, powerful bishop on g7. And I show you my game against Greg Shahadi, where after d4, knight takes, pawn takes, knight c3. We got into this really cool endgame. And even though white has tripled pawns, the fact that the king is stuck in the middle and this is a weak diagonal due to the weak square on b6, white actually managed to get a powerful attack and I got black in a made in net. So let's take a look at another possibility, the one that I played in this game. So here I actually didn't castle, instead I played bishop to d3. So some of you may say, well this is an odd square for the bishop. Aren't you blocking the c1 bishop and the d2 pawn? Yes, that's true, but you know, there's some other ideas as well here. So d6. So the main idea of bishop d3, if black plays this move e6, this natural looking move to play knight e7 castle, here white can simply take and play knight b5. And black can actually get into a lot of trouble if he is not careful. So if he plays this move d6, then there is c3, hitting the pawn, and after pawn takes, pawn takes, this bishop is coming to a3, a6 is always met by queen a4, because the rook is unprotected, and it turns out this pawn is really vulnerable on d6. And after knight e7, bishop a3, black is simply in bad position now, okay? because you cannot really stop the attack. So that's why my opponent plays d6, and I play knight takes, pawn takes, knight e2. So how can white free up himself? Well, obviously this bishop is blocked, so my plan is to play c3, and after black takes, I can take with a d pawn and open up my possession. And I can also castle. So here my opponent plays queen b6. This is a natural way to stop my plan. After c3, pawn takes, pawn takes, not only is bishop e3 impossible, but I cannot castle because of this diagonal is controlled by the black's queen. And here I actually came up with a really cool idea, and thus the topic of today's lecture. Aggressive pawn moves. So queen has to be bothered, and I play a4, x clan. This is kind of a multi-purpose move. I want to play a5 and create that version of the wing. So knight f6, black is saying, well, a4 
you know, I'm not really afraid. I'm going to move my queen to c5. And here, the diversion once again begins. b4, excellent. At this point, white should not stop at anything to get counterplay. If you make quiet moves like castles, castles, eventually black is going to be on top because white is simply behind in development. So b4, x clam, and black realizes that, well, he better take on b4, otherwise what's this whole point of moving the queen around? So queen takes. So here's the question for everyone. Can you find another active move for white? And the key is to realize the queen on b4 actually doesn't have a lot of squares. And we want to lure the queen into the open. Bishop a3, x clan. Well, queen doesn't really have a lot of options on the b file. And therefore, black has to buy the bullet. Queen takes pawn. And now white gets his activity. Bishop takes d6, x clan. Again, hitting the queen. But queen can simply drop back to d8. And now bishop e5. So this whole aggressive pawn idea is just to get the bishop on e5 and put pressure on the d4 pawn is pretty instructive. And so it turns out that the bishop on e5 is really bothersome. And black makes a logical decision to get rid of it. Knight h5 takes, takes. And now we have achieved exactly what white wanted to achieve. I managed to trade off one of key of defenders for black, the bishop on g7. Furthermore, the knight on g7 is misplaced. And even though white is down a pawn, it's really hard for black to take advantage of, of these pawns because the game is actually going to be ha happening on the king side. So castles, castles f5, x clan. So it turns out that black is still going to have some trouble here without dark square bishop. I'm taking out this guy from the game. Knight on g7 is misplaced. And this knight can jump to f4 or even g3. Or I can just simply start moving my queen closer to the king side. Now, one problem that white has is his d3 bishop. So this is really the only thing bad for me. E5, X clan. Black is not afraid of F6. Because this would be simply losing the pawn after knight E8. Black is going to say thank you very much. In return, this is again cementing this pawn, which in turn keeps my bishop out of the game. Well, white should not stop here. So I play queen E1. I simply want to get my queen closer to the king side. G5. A very interesting idea by Black, maybe a little controversial. On the other hand, taking on f5 was clearly not great. He wanted to do something. f6 he probably didn't like because of bishop c4 check. And then after king here I can take. Notice he cannot take back because of queen check. So at least from a Positional perspective, closing up the king side, this makes a lot of sense. And again, now we have the same situation that we had on the queen side. White needs to open up files. So what I play is an obvious move. H4, playing in the romantic style of old masters, just sacrificing pawns left and right, the key is to open up files. Of course, if pawn takes, I can throw in f6. Knight moves somewhere. I can take on h4, and black's king is once again in serious trouble. So black correctly doesn't take the pawn. Knight h5, x clan, knight on g7 is totally misplaced. And here I stop nothing at opening up files. g4, knight of 4 knight takes, and of course g takes f is the correct response. e takes f would be a big mistake because of e5 and white eventually break through either with f6, e6, and queen comes to e4. So g takes f. And this position is actually still quite balanced. Both sides played pretty good up to this point. My bishop is still out of the game, but I just need one more move to get it into the open. And my attack can still come rolling through with g5. 
Later on, I can put my king either on h2 or h1, play rook g1, and really try to blow open the g file with g6. So here, black already sort of panicked. After g5, he played the losing move f6. Instead, he should have realized that white still has needs a lot of moves to really get his attack going, and he should just keep the king on g8 and not to make a run for it as he did. Maybe keep the king on h8. So after f6, I simply improve my position. King f2, getting my rook into the game. Well, bishop c4 is always in the air, so there is no need to hurt. And he again makes another mistake. This time it's actually a losing mistake. He should have at least played king h8, and after rook g1, try to maybe defend this position of bishop d7, queen e7, and just try to hold things together. But of course, white has a much easier game with bishop c4, queen e2, maybe queen h5. So the question is, how can I take advantage of this move king f7? Well, obviously, I need to open things up. So rook g1, getting ready for opening of the g file. King e7, so that was his plan, right? He wanted to make a run for it, realizing that the number of pawns in the center, you know, these pawns, will be pretty good cover for the king. Although he didn't realize that I can still go after after the king on the g file. So simple means bishop c4 taking away the g8 square, and now black is already lost. I'm going to play d3. This bishop is out of the game. I have a lot of open files. Even though this rook doesn't do much, it's, it could actually jump into the game at any moment. So here he plays queen to c7, hitting the bishop, but this move loses on the spot. Let's see if you can find the win here. And here I win by opening up the g-file. g takes f x clam. Rook takes simply loses due to this uh, x-ray and skewer. And so king takes. And now all I have to do is get my queen over to g4. And with the threat of queen g5, queen g7, it's going to be game over. Queen e2, b5, queen g4, and he resigns. Because, of course, if he takes, check, or send the king with the seventh rank, check, and then he loses the queen. So already this game is lost. So after queen g4, he resigns. So this little miniature is really cool, because not only you saw a lot of really fun, aggressive pawn moves, but the key is how white use the aggressive pawn moves to first open up the queen side, take advantage of that queen, winning a few tempi, and then transferring his bishop over to e5. And then once I managed to trade over the dark square bishops, I started opening up the king side with very bold pawn moves, h4, g4, and even there, black was still in the game, he came up with a very cool idea, knight h5, knight f4, but then he faltered and try to make a run for it. But as they say, you can run, but you can't hide. With the wide open G file, I was able to create a winning attack. So I hope you enjoyed this fun game, and maybe you will be able to use the ideas in your own games. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessLecture.com. Thank you, and goodbye.